Welcome to The Real. It's a sad time for us, and we're going to keep it real with you, our fans, because we always do, and today's no different. As you can see, our girl Tamara isn't here with us today. She's at home with her family, mourning the loss of her niece, Elena Housley, who was tragically murdered in the bar shooting in Thousand Oaks, California. Elena was among 12 victims that included a sheriff sergeant named Ron Helis, who bravely died exchanging gunfire with the shooters, whose name we refuse to say. Ladies, unfortunately, we hear about these mass shootings every week in our country. We don't even have time to grieve before the next one happens. This was the 307th mass shooting in 311 days. And this time, it directly affected members of our family. How do you begin to process something like this? I think in the moment, you just feel angry, confused. A lot. You're at a loss for words. You don't even know what to say. There is no processing yet. The, like, it's so, it's still so fresh. Um, we. I woke up to your text, Lonnie. You were with Tamara. She was looking for Elena. Yeah. The whole family had seen that her Apple Watch was still indicating that she was in the place where it all happened, but her body or her, her you know, her presence wasn't anywhere to be found. And I just remember. When I was talking to Tamara, you try to keep positive, and you're like, the watch could have fallen off. It could have gotten stolen. And Tamara, being Tamara, was like, she could be wandering somewhere right now just in shock, not sure how to answer to people. She just hasn't been able to call us. And you, and I don't know, for you guys, too, I don't, if, you don't know what to say, but you're thinking every possible to keep the hope. positive angle that it would not be what you fear most. She called me at 1.30, and I was dead asleep, and I thought she had butt-dialed me because we had had dinner like three hours prior to that. So I thought, oh, it was just, you know. And then she called me again, and then I knew something was wrong because she doesn't call me that late. And she was frantic. I immediately went over there to her, and, um, you know, we were looking at the reports. She's, the Housley family, because Adam went to the actual crime scene because he went to go look for her, and then we, st we just started getting pieces of information. Mm -hmm. um, she, uh, Tamara was calling every hospital she could because we were holding out hope that maybe she was at the hospital. She said or she, she called went. multiple times. The All the time. time. The Just hotline, time. everything. And then, um, you know, we heard from one of her suite mates, and the suite mate, the suite mate said everybody got out they were on the dance floor line dancing. This was um, college night. That's the reason why they were there. So they allowed 18 and up to be there just for this, this particular night. And the Borderline is a very popular bar in Thousand Oaks. And so they were line dancing. And according to the suite mates, sh they were still dancing. Elena went to go sit down at the table. And it was just a matter of seconds, they said. They got out the window. They don't know what had happened to yeah. Elena. And around, um, we had to wait for... Uh, her parents to come down, and then we got the official word that Elena um, was one of the victims. So, um, and that's the part that shakes me the most because when I, I I was at work actually working out, and I missed a call from Tamara after we had tried to put out positive vibes, and then I looked at the phone and I was like, okay, I'm gonna call her back, but I was so scared of of, of what to hear, mm -hmm. and when I called her back, all she had to do was breathe, and I just knew. And the next sounds from Tam. Everybody, you guys know Tamara. You know, she's always so just even keeled, Positive. Grounded. Yes. Mm -hmm. That sound that comes from a human soul when they lose somebody is a sound you'll never forget. And when I heard Tamara's cries, then you just think about the parents. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. And then that sound, it just ricochets off of every single soul wailing out for 308 mass shootings. It's not normal. You can't get rid of that sound. It's not normal. And that's all I've just been playing over and over in my head. And then you go through the anger, and then I think about my friends who, who are for gun safety, and just, it, you know, you just, you start blaming people. Right. But it was the moment, and I texted you, Adrian, the moment when I read what the shooter posted, moments before he did what he did, mm -hmm. And he called us insane. He said, you guys He did call it during. He, sh he shot it up. Then he made two um, posts. He actually... What? Yeah, he did I two posts. I thought they posts. were prior to. They no, were during. They were during. He sent the oh, post, and then he did. And, they, and it was both. He said yeah. something before. He did something um, during. And, um, but that should, was the we problem. We should read what that person said. That was the what problem. What he basically yeah. says is that we call people like him insane. And that... 
the definition the of, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again expecting and expecting a different, a different result. And he says, but we offer, after things like this, prayers and thoughts. And y'all think I'm insane? Like that's... And nothing changes. And he's right. Nothing changes. Because as an avid prayer, I can't pray anymore. I can't. I, because no, I will stop praying, but stop also praying. on no, top no, of prayer I and the change. change that needs to happen. And no, this actually, is the change that we need to have. Yeah. I, this is the yeah. change. Following the news... Former Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, who herself has been a victim of gun violence, tweeted out saying, in part, 307 so far this year, they have been 307 mass shootings. Do we really want to raise our children in a country where mass shootings are a weekly occurrence? A country where every single day in America, more than 90 people are killed with guns? This level of gun violence doesn't happen in other high-income countries. I'm heartbroken, I'm angry, and I'm never going to accept this as normal. I'm right there with her. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah. No, it's been ridiculous. We're, we're so far beyond ridiculous. My issue is I don't have the answer. You get what I mean? Like, I don't have like a, like a clear, clear answer. Like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Because obviously there are people that are going to say, well, there are still guns out there that people can get a hold of. Uh, the question is, this man actually got the gun legally. He obviously illegally had the uh, attachment piece that you added to it that allowed him to shoot more than normal. That was illegal. So what do we do? And bigger, the, the bigger question is, why are people doing this? What is wrong with and us? And not just why are people. Why is it always a white male? I'm just, that's, that's just something that's on I, my mind. Why? Why? I hate, I hate, I hate that race has to come into it. It is a very real question to ask because if you read the statistics, it is what it is. There's a, I, I hate the idea that we keep bringing up race and everything feels so divisive. But yes, you are stating the facts, but it feels like we are being torn apart in so many different directions, whether it be what political party you are, what race you are. There's like hatred just in the air. It's thick. It feels disgusting. It feels terrible. People are dying. Pe people are losing their children. It's unfair. So what do we do? Does it start with the people? Does it start with the core of our hearts? We need to yes. call on Jesus or something because it's crazy. Well, following the shooting, California Senator Dianne Feinstein has called for his votes on several gun control bills, saying that if these laws don't change, the country will continue to see more bodies pile up. She said, quote, these mass shootings are depressingly pervasive. Schools, theaters, malls, Can't offices, synagogues, grocery stores, bars, concerts, churches. They're inspired by racism, revenge, terrorism, or just pure hatred. The one common attribute, easy access to guns. Yep. One of the laws she's advocating for includes a renewed ban on military style assault weapons and one on a ban on bump stocks. It's also reported that Democrats ousted at least 15 House Republicans with A ratings in the NRA, which will help them to pursue more aggressive gun control legislation. And this is what I mean. I'm not giving up a hope on faith and just know that I'm just, this is my friend. Yes. Who's mourning this. So I'm not giving up, you know, on my faith and, and my belief in prayer. I just, I'm done sitting there and just praying. I think every single person out there has to make a move to go and do what's right and to try to make change. Also, I want to bring up, um, the other thing that I noticed is, is, um, is a pattern. Yeah. Besides who's doing it and Americans and all of us involved is um, that we always look to mental illness, right? The one thing you always hear, I, I get obsessed with reading, who was the shooter? What was his mother and father like? What was their childhood like? What, you know, what, what did his teachers know the same thing? Who does this? And the thing is, we have, obviously, we all know that somebody being mentally ill does not mean that they're violent, Correct. first and foremost. However, there is um, something called the red flag law that I learned about. It allows family members or the police to re request a gun violence restraining order temporarily prohibit a person from purchasing firearms or um, ammunition. So I know for me, I know a few people that I, I, I just feel from my discernment also you just notice that they may not be well. 
And I think we just need to pay a lot more closer attention together because we can't read another headline where the neighbor or the mom says, oh, I, knew, I was scared of my own son. Or the teacher says, I, w I wasn't sure about this one. This is where the red flag law, this is something for everybody to know. It is your civic duty to protect right. each other. If you see something, say something. Right. Say something now. And it, also, yeah. it also this, this shooter was a former Marine. And last week, it's funny, last week we had um, actor and activist Jeffrey Wright come on the show. And he actually has an HBO documentary that's called titled, We Are Not Done Yet, and it addresses um, issues PTSD. concerning veterans um, with PTSD. PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. I think that there is something that we also have to study that's going on with our veterans yes. to make sure that they get the help that they need so again, that they don't do... that's not to say all of them are going to go do mass shootings, but... Right. But People this, need in help. this case, that was, that was one of the things, too. Yeah. So if you're concerned about gun control, you can reach out to your representatives. You guys have the power. Representatives at the federal, state, and local level. Call them, tweet them, Facebook them, and let them know that you demand change. It's also so important to vote for. That's why we were telling people, get out there and vote, because it's important to vote for and donate to politicians who advocate for common sense gun reform. And finally, be smart. Educate yourself about federal and state gun laws so you can make informed decisions. Um, I spoke to Adam, and he, along with what we just said, he also wanted to add this, that while we're helping these gun laws and trying to make that happen, before we can even get a consistent national gun policy, we have to understand that we as a country and as a society are at crossroads. The hatred, the judgment, the polarization, and the lack of heart. We are going to make a change, I can guarantee it, and Alana is with us as we do this. And on that note, you know, I want to talk about the life of Elena Housley. I'll start by reading Tamara's post about her. She said, Elena, my sweet, sweet Elena, my heart breaks. I'm still in disbelief. It's not fair how you were taken and how soon you were taken from us. I was blessed to know you, you ever since you were five. You stole my heart. I will miss your inside jokes, us serenading at the piano. Thank you for being patient with me, learning how to braid your hair. And I will never forget our duet singing the national anthem at Napa soccer game. I love you. I love you. I love you. You're going to make one gorgeous angel. My heart and prayers are with every victim of this tragedy. Elena was only 18 years old. She was a freshman at Pepperdine University, the same school that Adam and Tamara attended. She planned to major in English literature and join a vocal music program after being involved in her high school choir. She was also involved in a charity program that donated soccer equipment to young people in the developing world. Elena's parents, Eric and Hannah, and her little brother, Alex, they say they want to honor her by focusing on how she lived her life. They say that she would have enjoyed the public debate that is certain to happen after this tragedy and that she would have insisted to be respectful with every eye towards solving these senseless shootings. I also want to give a shout out to her grandparents, um, Art and Judy Housley. Art watches us all the time. Our hearts are really with you. Lonnie, Tamara actually wanted me to say something that she wrote for you. Oh. Oh, God, I can't. Okay. She said, please tell Lonnie, thank you. Thank you for being there for me and answering her phone at 1 a.m., giving me hope. This is what she told me, to for giving her hope until I got the call. Thank you for holding me and helping me breathe through the unthinkable. Thank you for always believing in the Housleys. The Housleys will be strong. Yes. We will never let Elena or any other victim of gun violence die in vain. Yes. Tamara also said, Tam, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get okay. to Okay. You're doing it. Um, Tam said to please let everyone know that she will do everything she can to make sure that our children and our community feel safe. She says enough is enough. She said she will never give up fighting until her dying day. So yes. I, but I, I have to say to Lonnie, you are a phenomenal friend. Yes. When people oh need God. you, you are there. Show up. And we thank you for yes. that. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Always. Hey, and, it's my pleasure. Yeah, I'm glad I was, I was there, you know. I mean, this is uncharted territory yes, for us so all. Awkward. We just want to send our love to Terrible. Adam and Tamara and to the whole entire Housley family, to all of the victims that were affected by this. We love you all so much. We're going to be here for you. Tamara, 
wants to thank everyone for their heartfelt uh, prayers and messages. And we'll get through this together as a family, everyone.